He's the preeminence of all these people. He's the one that created the heavens and the earth. Read. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And you guys want to trust in this spiritual Egypt. This is why he's taking this place down. You're not going to, the, 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 the plagues are not going to stop. Those disasters are not going to stop. He's going to keep doing the fires, the earthquakes, tsunamis. He's not going to stop until he accomplishes his mission. Read. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the strength of this place is going to be to your shame. Because this is what you put your trust in, is all this carnal stuff and mammon. You trust in money and nothing but carnal things. You're going to see what the Most High does with this. He's taking this financial system down, brick by brick. Read. And, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. And this is going to be to your confusion, putting your trust in all of this. This is why Jeremiah said, Cursed is the man that trusts in man and maketh flesh his arm. You can go there. Let's just go to that one. Let's see what he said through the prophet Jeremiah. Cursed is the man. Let's see. Let's see if he didn't say this. Jeremiah 17 and verse 7. Go ahead. Cursed be the man. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. He said, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Read. And make his flesh his arm. And you make flesh his arm. You guys want to put your trust in nothing but a man. Let's see what the Most High God said about it. Read. And whose heart departed from the Lord. Because once you've done this, now that pride has got you puffed up. And now your heart is departed from the Most High God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The only true and living God. Read. For he shall be like the house in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh. And so you're not going to, you guys aren't going to see when good cometh. You guys, you're putting your trust in all of this. But that's why he said, when you think peace and safety, then, this is what Paul said in Thessalonians, then sudden destruction is coming upon them, and they shall not escape. Read. But shall inhabit, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabit it. And see, you're, you're not, in other words, he says, you're not going to prosper with the way you're going. This is, you, you've had this dispensation of time to do what you've done, but, it, but you can't pass those bounds that the Most High God has appointed everybody. You're not going to pass those bounds that he's appointed for everyone here. Read. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. But blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Read. And whose hope the Lord is. Because our hope, we put our hope in the Most High God of Abraham. This is where our hope is. The one that's destroying this place right now. That's who's doing all of this. It's not Mother Nature. This is the God of Abraham at work. Read. For he shall be as the tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. And see, we're always going to be just fine. Because we put, he's, we've made the Most High our habitation and the Most High God our refuge. So we're going to always be fine. But the ones that don't put their trust in him, he's coming after you. He said he's coming after all his adversaries on the planet. Every single one of them. Read. A tree. Oh. A tree, planet. And shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. And we're going to always yield fruit. This is why Christ said it in the Gospel of John. He said, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you, and appointed you that you should go out and bear fruit, and that your fruit remains. We're going to always keep our fruit growing, because we're doing what saith the Most High God. We're not putting our trust in no man. And Paul covered this well. He said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Read. Go ahead. First Kings 22, verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. And we're going to speak what the Lord tells us to speak in this Bible. We're not going to give you the imaginations of our heart like you're so accustomed to. You're going to get what saith the Lord, and that's all you're going to get. Read. Acts 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. See, everything we're going to give you is right out of the scriptures. He said we ought to obey God rather than man. We're not putting our trust in no man here. Because all you guys do is disappoint with your lies and your deceit and your unrighteous decrees. God knows all about it and your ill dealings. God knows all about everything that's going on here. Read. The God of our fathers 
raised up Yahweh Shai. See, the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Yahweh Shai, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. The one that you guys slew and hung on a tree, because you guys are from that lineage. You guys are the Romans. That's Esau, too. You guys crucified Christ. He's coming after his adversaries. Read. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. And now Yahawashai is seated on the right hand of God. He's seated up there in the heavens on the right hand of God because of dying on that cross. Read. For to give repentance to Israel. And it's only for the Israelites. It's not for nobody else. It's not for Moab, the Chinese. It's not for Ammon, the Japanese. It's not for Ishmael, the Arabs. It's not for Esau. It's not for no one else but the Israelites. Read. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And that forgiveness of sins is only going to the Israelites. See, when it's all said in Isaiah 14. Go to Isaiah 14, start at verse 1. See, when it's all said and done, the Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob. Only on Jacob's lineage. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That covenant he made from the foundation of the world, it's not going to change because you guys didn't like it. Read. Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And see, when it's all said and done, the Lord is still going to have mercy on Jacob. Read. And will yet choose Israel. And he's going to yet choose Israel. Read. And set them in their own land. And he's going to set us back in our homeland. He's going to set us back in our homeland, Jerusalem. Because it says it in Galatians. Jerusalem, which is above, is free. That's the mother of us all. Galatians 4 and 26. You don't believe us? Look it up. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And some of you people, you're going to be joined with us over in the New Jerusalem. But let's listen to your status of what you're going to be over there. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And some of you, you're going to be cleaving to the house of Jacob the way we've had to cleave to you over here. Read. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And we're going to take you. And we're going to bring you to our place. Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. And listen to how, what your status is going to be over in the new Jerusalem. Read. For servants. You're going to be slaves over there. What else? And handmaids. Slaves. Read. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And see, so you guys, we're, we're yet this day in our captivity. But it's getting ready to be a shift of power. Read. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And when it's all said and done, we're going to be ruling over our oppressors underneath Hamashiach Yahawashai. This is after he smashes every single nation on the planet. He's taking all the crowns. Read. And it shall come to pass in the day that it, the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage where thou was made to serve. And see, this has been hard bondage for our people. And all this oppression and all this perpetual hatred, this everlasting hatred you guys been pushing on us. But the Most High God knows all about it. He's getting ready to bring all this to an end. You guys are going to have to pay for your transgressions of what you've done here in the body. Read. Acts 5, verse 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. And a lot of people, they hear this, then they're cut in the heart. This bothers people. It dampens their spirit. It vexes them once they hear this. See, the Most High God, He has everything documented in these holy scriptures. See, this is, this is, we're the ones He gave this covenant to. He gave this to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. And, to, and took counsel to slay them. And see, a lot of people, they're probably like, oh, we need to get rid of those guys over there because we're speaking the truth. This is why Christ came into the world. And that was to give testimony of the truth. And that's to be true to God. Read. Verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. See, everything that is, is, is just of man, the Most High God said it's coming to nothing. All this stuff you guys did here, building this place on blood, that's why he's bringing this down. It's coming to nothing. See, if the Lord don't build a house, the house was made in vain. Read. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. But if it's of God, you cannot overthrow it. That's why when that kingdom comes in, that's Christ's kingdom and David's kingdom. That's an everlasting kingdom that's never going to end. Nobody's going to be able to destroy this kingdom that's on the way. Read. Let happily ye be found even to fight against God. And if you want to try to fight against the Most High God, you can go try it. And see how he takes you down with a hurricane. 
And let's see. Go to Nahum. Let's see how he handles his business in the winds and in the fires in the storms. Let's see. You can go try to fight a tornado. Go try to fight it. Read. Nahum. Nahum. Nahum 1 verse 2. God is jealous and the Lord revenges. See, the Most High God of Abraham is jealous and he's going to take vengeance on his adversary. Read. The Lord revenges and is furious. And the Lord is, is furious right now sitting up on the throne. He's furious of how you guys have been treating his chosen people. Read. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserves his wrath for his enemies. And he's just got a day appointed. Like you guys say, every dog has his day. He's got a day appointed for all the wicked people. And you're not going to know when he takes care of you. When he pays you that visit, you're going to know he paid you the visit, but he's not going to give you an appointment. Read. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. See, the Lord is slow to anger. He's been refraining himself for quite a while. Because a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. Read. And will not at all acquit the wicked. And he's not at all going to acquit the wicked. Nobody that's wicked is getting a pass from the Most High God of Abraham. I